I see that many of you are confused about metric to metric conversion. So I'm going to do uh, this video and teach you a little bit um, in a different way than your book does to help clarify some things. Um, first, I expect you to know the prefixes for the metric units. And um, we're going to do an example. I'm going to follow example 77. Uh, in your book on page 50, completing the table, and we're going to work out some of those problems, okay? So, if I wanted to convert 5.08 times 10 to the 8th meters per second into, or I'm sorry, meters, into kilometers, how am I going to do that? Well, since I have meters is on the top, I'm going to put meters on the bottom. And then I'm going to put kilometers on the top because that's my desired unit. And what I need you to know for the test is that you have a base unit, which is either the meter, liter, or gram, or even second, if you will. It's just the unit without any prefixes on it, okay? And then we have something that is called decimeter, which means one one-tenth of the base unit. Then we have centimeter, which is one one hundredth. Milli is one one thousandth, right? Then I'm going to put two lines for placeholders because I don't expect you to know the names of those units. And we're going to go to micro meters or micro liters. And micro has the symbol this. So you should be able to recognize this. This is density, this is, or I'm sorry, deci, this is santi, this is milli, micro this. But these mean something, except I'm using them as placeholders now, okay? So, two more placeholders, and then you should know nanometer. Nano is designated by lowercase n, okay? And so, what this means is if I have one milliliter, it's... One, two, three powers of ten smaller than the base unit liter. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side of this. Again, I'm going to put lines for space holders, and I expect you to know what kilo is, and two lines and what mega is. Mega is represented by uppercase M. Okay, so in this case, what um, kilometer means is it's one, two, three, three powers of 10 larger than the base unit, whereas milli is three powers of 10 smaller than our base unit. Okay, with that being said, let us see how we can use this now. Okay. Here we're going from meters to kilometers, okay? So meter is the base unit and kilometers is what our target unit is. Which is bigger? That's the first question you want to ask yourself. Which unit is bigger? In this case, kilo, because kilo lies above the base unit, so that's one. And then we want to ask ourselves, by how many powers of 10 is this larger? So we say one, two, three. I made three loops, so that means it's three powers of 10 larger. And what does that mean? 10 cubed. 10 times 10 times 10 or a thousand. So you could either write it as a thousand or 10 to the third. So what this is saying, there's a thousand meters for every one kilometer or 10 to the third meters for every one kilometer. The reason why I use this system is this avoids um, negative exponents when we're dealing with this side of the conversion table, okay? And I'll show you what I mean by that in a little bit. So now my meters cancel and I'm left with my desired unit of kilometers, okay? And what's great about the system, this can be also written as 10 to the third I can do this in my head. 10 to the 8th divided by 10 to the 3rd gives me 
5.08 times 10 to the fifth, if you remember your exponents. When you divide your exponents, you just take 8 minus 3, and that gives you 5. You can always plug that into your calculator. I don't mind, but that's why we use this as the scientific system, because all of our your units are related by powers of 10. Okay? Now, let's say that I wanted to convert to uh, 5.8 times 10 to the 8th meters, and I want to go from meters to millimeters. Your book has that already, but I want to show it to you. Um, again, these, this, this is what I expect you to know for the test. Anything additional in the book is not required. So just know mega, kilo, base unit, deci, centi, milli, micro, and nano. Okay? So now I look at my base unit. I'm going from meters here, and I'm going to millimeters. Okay? So which unit is bigger, the meter or the millimeter? I'm going to say the meter because it lies higher on the table. So that's one meter. The meter gets the one. Now, by how many powers of 10 is my meter bigger than my milliliter? Okay, so I'm going to count. One, two, three. This is three powers of 10 or a thousand. Okay, so when I write this, I say... There's a thousand millimeters for every one meter. This for me is easier than saying there's one um, millimeter, or I'm sorry, there's for every point zero zero one millimeter or 10 to the negative third millimeters, there's one meter, okay? So this is easier for me. It's easier to say there's a thousand millimeters for every one meter because the meter is bigger, and so it makes sense that I have a thousand millimeters for every one meter, okay? So now you see my meters cancel and I'm left with millimeters, and look at this. I can do this in my head too. I don't expect you to, of course you can use your calculator, but I know when I'm multiplying exponents, this is going to be 5.8 times 10 to the 11th millimeters, okay? And so you should be able to do something like that on the exam very easily, okay? How about if we want to convert from cubic centimeters, let's say 1.0 cubic centimeters to cubic meters this time. Okay, so we have a direct conversion factor from centimeters to meters. Let's figure that out because centimeters is on the top. I'm going to put centimeters on the bottom. Okay, and so let's see my conversion factor here. So let's erase this one from the previous slide. And since here's my base unit, the meter, and here's my centimeter. Which one is bigger? The meter. So it's going to get the 1. By how many powers of 10? Let me count. 1, 2. 2 powers of 10. So what this is saying is there's 100 centimeters for every 1 meter. Okay? But guess what? I can't really cancel out the centimeters because this is cubic centimeters and this is just centimeters. Um, it just would not make sense. This is a unit, cubic centimeters is a unit of volume, and centimeters is a cube, is, is a unit of length. So that means I have to cube the entire thing. So this becomes one point cubic centimeters times, and I have to carry this to my numbers and to my units as well. So one cubic centimeter, one cubed is one, meters cubed is meters cubed, what is 10 to the second cubed? I would have to take 3 times 2, so it becomes 10 times 6. 
and this becomes cubic centimeters. Now look what I can do. My cubic centimeters can now cancel out and I'm left with cubic meters. Okay. And so I get an answer of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 6 cubic meters for every 1 cubic centimeter. Okay? So that is how you would do that. I hope that conversions is now a bit clearer to you. Make sure you memorize this table for the exam. Um, also, if we wanted to do um, metric to English conversions or English to metric conversions, I will give you the table. So metric to metric, you have to memorize this table and be able to use it like I did.